Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sam Barsky, and this is the beginning of my first episode of Knitting with Sam Barsky. This is the name of my new show. This is just the first episode. As you see, it's as I've done all my other live videos now, it's in my living room, and this is how the show is going to start. But over time, I try, I'm planning to make this show more advanced. I'm going to do it in more places besides my home, besides my living room. I'm going to do it out and about in other places too. I'm going to do it with other people. I'm planning to have guests on my show at times. My show is going to be about the knitting I do, first of all. So I'll work on whatever project I happen to be working on at the time. That'll be the focus of the show, but I'll also bring on other people who can share their knitting or whatever talents they have and tell about whatever it is that they're interested in. So it, the show will be a combination of my knitting and that of other people or whatever other or craft or talent that you wish to show. Uh, the reason why I decided to start doing it today, some of you, of you may have seen my Facebook post from earlier today. Exactly one year ago today was the day I woke up in the morning and found that a viral article about my sweaters had been created on a site I had never heard of before called Imgur, or as some people pronounce it, Imagura. I'm unsure about that still to this day, but that was the beginning of like a media frenzy about my sweaters. And in order to celebrate that, I figured this would be an appropriate day to start. Next week, on Sunday, I'm going to be giving a lecture and teaching a class at Vogue Knitting Live in New York City for people who are registered or who haven't registered yet, who plan to. I think both of them still have some spaces, so anyone who is going to be around there at the time is welcome to jo come join me and register on the Vogue site. I'll be spending Wednesday through Sunday in New York City attending Vogue Knitting, and I'm hoping to meet up with a lot of different people during the time. So, this is my work in progress, which I'm making partially for the event. So, this is an ice skating sweater. So, the theme of it, as you see, these are this is the back of it, and here are just some random skaters in different places. This is the front, and it has... Skaters doing all kinds of interesting things, like ice dancing at the bottom corner. The top corner has one ice skater uh, twirling another, pair skating, figure, pair figure skating. One sleeve of it is done already. And this is a single skate, female skater on here. And then here's this one, which I have 30 more rows left to do. It's like the equivalent of 25 rows of this. This is all I have to do left. It's about 2,000 stitches to go. So I'm going to start off by introducing the final yarn I'll ever need on it. And I'll fin probably finish, uh, all, all likelihood, and I hope I do finish it this evening. So I'm going to do, I'm going to let this hang on the floor. And I'm going to insert the needle into the, the white stitch. But this white yarn is finished. As you see, I've cut it over here. So, I'm going to take the purple yarn, which is going to represent the top of it, the, either the wall or anything at the top, anything above the ice, and I'm inserting it, carrying it off like that. So, here, that's how I introduce a new color. Then I'm going to take the purple, go under the white, like that, and then I'm going to take the tail from the purple, like that, knit a second stitch, and then... I could just keep going at this point, but I want to make it easier so I won't have to nitpick it after. So I'm going to take this white and cross it over the purple like that. And I'm going to do that for like the next 10 to 15 stitches. I'll also have to do this two rows from now on with the, the, the purple tail on the, the next time I get around to this side of it. So I'm going to... Knit 15 more stitches of this. I, I could get by with 10, but I just do it to make it more secure. 
and then I'll do it with the other one. But well, I only have solid color knitting, so I'll use this time to tell you about this show. I plan to release a new episode every week. I'm going to start it on Facebook Live. And then I'm also going to share it from my personal page to my knitting page, which is called Sambarski Artistic Knitter. So that way I'll have it on both of my pages. And then I plan to also copy a link of it to YouTube. So that way it'll be on YouTube. See if I have, taking a break to see if I have enough stitches here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six. So I have plenty of stitches. I don't have to cross this white tail over anymore. So I can just do straight knitting up to the end here. So I. I plan to have it on both Facebook and YouTube. So for those of you who don't have Facebook, you'll still have access to these videos, either for yourself or to share with your family and friends from YouTube. And I'll let people know what the links are so they can see them on YouTube as well. So over to, right now this show is very simple. It's just ex an extension to the live videos I've been doing now and I'm hoping to grow it over time to add more to the background with it I'm as I said I want to have other people come on the show and explain different things that from their points of view other people who are well known in knitting I want to make it a, a this show for everyone. So here I'm going to switch to a pearl row. So this is row 72 on here at, out of 100. And each episode will vary in length. It's not going to nothing going to be an exact length of time. It all depends on like what I want to get accomplished on that episode. Like I don't necessarily have control over what is on any given episode because it just happens to be with what I'm up to at that given time. You may ask also what about this sweater. So anyway, the purpose this is an ice skating sweater and it took me a while before I decided that's what I was going to do. I knew I was going to New York for Vogue Knitting Live, so I was thinking of making something New York themed in honor of that. And I was thinking of all different landmarks that I had not done yet on a sweater. Since I had done the skyline, as you see I'm wearing my Times Square sweater. That's another New York landmark. And I did the Twin Towers. As everyone who's heard one of my speeches in person has heard, I have done. I did the Twin Towers already. So that's what I've done in the way of New York City. So... I was thinking of doing Central Park, but then I was thinking of Rockefeller Center, the ice skating rink. But this is a, any ice skating rink, but my plan is once I get up there, I'm going to pose in front of the rink there. I want to rent a pair of skates and take my picture in them. I figure that would be a nice place to do it. The bus that I'm taking stops at Rockefeller Center. That's a stop. So I'm going to start the next row now. And in the next row, I'm going to I'll work on this tail. I'll show you that. But I'm also going to introduce a new stitch. So I'll show you that, how I introduce this stitch. So I'm doing, I just knitted the first stitch like usual. Then I'm going to take this, form a loop, put the loop over here. That's the creation of the next stitch to widen this, to increase. Then I'm going to take the tail. I'll do the 15 crossings over. So... I'm trying to reach a target number of stitches, which is, this is supposed to be that much wide as it gets to the top. Like a, a sleeve is like a trapezoid shape. So it's skinny at the bottom and it it's, gets wider at the top. And the way you do that is you add like a stitch on each side every so many rows. In this case, every four rows. 
And if I remember to do every stitch where it should be, then I should have my final stitches added in row 77, which is four rows after this. But in case I forgot any, I sometimes I do miss one or two every now and then. I can make up for them in later rows after that, which in this case, it would be row 81. I'm getting people saying hi to me from all over the world, so I'm just going to say hi back to everyone else. So, I'm going to check what stitch number I'm on. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So I done plenty of these and now I can just do straight knitting to the end of this row except I'll add one more stitch here and then I'll double check how many stitches I have I could either do that while knitting or while counting and it's faster to take a break and just count them without knitting because then it's if you do it while knitting the next row it's easy to lose your count especially when you're talking it happens all the time. Most of the time when I'm knitting, I am talking to someone else. Not on video, but in person. I do most of my knitting in groups of other people. So I can do like a counting in like 20 seconds or something. I could do a, row, a stitch count. but Whereas it takes me several minutes to do a row by knitting it. So as I'm getting to the end of this row, I'll stop. In the second to last stitch, and then I'm going to add another stitch like that. I take the feeder, make a loop out of it, put the loop over here, pull it not too tight, and then knit the final stitch. And that adds a second stitch. So I'm going to see how many stitches I've got here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Two, four, six, eight, thirty. Two, four, six, eight, forty. Two, four, six, eight, fifty. Two, four, six, eight, sixty. So I have sixty. I should have had sixty-one. So that means that in row eighty-one, I have to add one more stitch after that. So here is row seventy-four. This is just straight knitting. Nothing special in this row. Since I did all the color work, all the designs, and all the previous rows. And this is, this was a sweater that I did differently from any others. I felt like doing so would be more suitable for this design. But I'll take a break from this, to, after this row to show you. And I'm actually going to show you other things as I get a chance to. Because I want to show more than, than just straight one color knitting on my show. So after this row, I'll show you some other things of interest on this sweater. Things that are important. Having to do with it, because part of the purpose of this show is to teach skills to other people. While I do teach my classes, the typical class that I teach, the typical session I have is two to three hours long. And there is more than just two to three hours. I teach the basics and many people have taken my class before and been able to knit something quite interesting out of it. But every sweater has new techniques to show and really the purpose is to show the techniques I'm using for that sweater. So even though I've done it already, I'll show you some stuff about this. This is not exactly intarsia as you know, in which you do this and this and this. I only use one skein of white for all of this. And on the back, instead of just having a separate skein going across, I did something called twining to carry it across, where I, uh, every couple of stitches, I crossed the white over whatever color it was. As you can see from here. And that way I brought it across here. That's another option to do. I did it with all these skaters and the reason why was because there were so many colors in it. Each skater is made up of several colors of yarn. Sometimes multiple strands of each yarn and it's such small pieces of it that I felt it was more sub suitable to do it that style. 
using those techniques. So while we're at it, since I did those four rows, what I'm going to do is to start attaching the sleeve. And I'll show you how I do that. So what we, we you need to do that is you need one of these to a stitch holder. There are other objects you can use for this purpose, but that's what I use because I have them handy. And then here is a, a needle point needle. I have tons of these and I lose them frequently. They're very tiny. So I have to replace them quite a lot. So what I have to do right now is to find the middle stitch here going across. We always have an odd number of stitches going across here, so when you divide it in half, there is a middle stitch, and the middle stitch attaches to the shoulder seam, like right over here. So the way you find the first stitch is you have to start from here. Every uh, a stitch is a V shape, so every time you find, a, find the first V, that's a column, and then you have to find more V's for more columns. One, two, three, four, five. So right now I've counted five. I have to get up to 31 because it has 63 across. 63 minus one is 62 and divided by two is 31. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So that's 31. So here's number 32, which is the exact middle. So I'm going to say hi to everyone. I'm getting some more people saying hi to me from all different locations. So I'm into going to insert this into the middle of the V of stitch number 32 and then this one over here I'm going to attach it over here to this shoulder seam so this is where the three needle bind off was already performed and then I'm going to insert it through here close this is here and it's attached. So now what I'm going to do, here's the tail of it, which is going to be used to do perform the attachment. So I'm going to pull this loose. I always leave a long, it's better to leave a longer than a shorter tail. So I'm going to place this on the needle and then I already had Planned it in such a way that the end of the purple here is what should meet this corner here. So I'm going to insert the needle here into the first purple row. I'm not going to attach the whole sleeve now. I'm just going to show you the very beginning of this. So now this is inserted here and then I'm going to run this through under the first V horizontally here. One of the challenges that you, of attaching a sleeve is that is that stitches are not perfect rectangle perfect squares they're like more like five seven so you have to have five of these for every seven of these five columns across here for every seven rows and you have to when you sew match up five to seven constantly or else your sewing will not be even. This makes it one of the hardest parts, one of the slowest parts of finishing off a sweater. So I'm going to, I'll do like a set of five to seven now. But you want to get under every stitch, every stitch you see, every bar you see here, you want to get under every one of them or to have the stablest hold. If you need to, you have to go under some of them more than once. And you have to go under at least two each time or else it won't hold very steady. So 
so like what we do is we break it down into a half so you try to sew up half and then you take this move it down to here and sew up the other half and then a sleeve is attached and then you can sew up the side seams and the sides of the sleeve and then it's done and then you just have nitpicking to do and I'll show you some nitpicking on this episode so I can just so you can see a variety of different stuff that is done so here we have to go under two bars here sometimes you might need to go under three but you ha always have to go under at least two sometimes you'll have to go under a bar more than once and that doesn't hurt either Sometimes if you get off sync with each side, you'll have to backtrack by going under one more than once to even it out. And you don't want to compensate too much at once. Otherwise, you'll get some bunching together. So you go under here. So here we go. This is as much as I'm going to do on the show today. As you see, I've successfully attached it. So now I'm going to show you a different technique, which is the nitpicking. As you see, I've done nitpicking here, but as you see, there are some loose threads. And what we want to do is to be able to, you don't want to just cut it with scissors right away or else it'll just unravel. So here I have my portable scissors here. These scissors just like this can be purchased at many yarn shops. So what I'm going to do for nitpicking, I take the end of this and put it on the needle point needle. Then we're going to go under other yellow stitches here. You want to do it at least five to ten times. I try to go for a minimum of ten. So that way it'll hold better. So I go under here and then you go under, not toward it, but away from it backwards. So that way, it'll create more resistance from coming out. One, two, three, four, five, and then we go backwards a little. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then you can do it any more if you want to. There's no maximum that you can do as long as you have some of the loose yarn and some stitches to go under. Here, are, and then you take scissors. You don't cut it exactly too close. You want to leave like a couple of millimeters. And then you can cut the a split in here and that provides even more resistance from coming off. You don't need to keep this. You can toss it if you want. I keep it because I have a friend who likes these, who collects these and has a use for them. So I give them to her. I see her at a particular knitting group I go to every week. So I, um, every few weeks I have a new collection of them for her. Here, as I was showing you how I was crossing on, on the sleeve, I did that here. This is where I ran out of some yarn. So here, because as you see, there's a ridge here. I, that's because I crossed it over on a whole bunch of stitches. So I, I can just cut this off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut it like maybe like a few millimeters above where it was. Then I'm going to cut it through like that. Now split it. And then I don't need it anymore. So here's my collection of these. And here's another one above, just like this. Cut it like a few millimeters above. Cut through like that. Splits it here to provide some resistance. So there's some nitpicking for you. So anyway, I'll tell you about my Vogue Knitting Live appearance. Wednesday morning... My wife and I will be traveling on a bus up to New York. So we'll be in New York on Wednesday. We'll be open to meeting any friends of ours who are not going to Vogue Knitting Live, but who want to just get together with us. We might be able to meet like for 
like whether it be a maybe a meal, maybe just a few minutes somewhere, just to say hello, like in a the lobby of our hotel or in a, a cafe or restaurant or a Starbucks or some place like that. We could uh, come and meet for a few minutes. I would bring some of my sweaters with me so I would show you whoever wants to meet me. If you're a knitter who want you could bring some of your knitted stuff to show us. That would be really nice. And just to say hello. We we have a busy schedule, so we're making a schedule so, to see who we we're going to meet when and then on Sunday from 11 to noon, that's going to be my lecture because one of the things that you see a lot at Vogue Knitting Live are lectures, and that's when I'm going to talk about my story behind this and things I've learned along the way. I have quite a large audience coming to that already, but there's still some spaces. And then from 2 to 5 p.m., I'm teaching the class, as I said, which is the basics of the skills how to do this. I teach about 15 different techniques. I've modified the class from time to time after I've seen what's worked and what's ha hasn't, but I'm going to teach it up to what I've included in it at this point, and that's three hours long. It gives me, I like that I have three hours because it gives me some time to give individual attention to people. And then, in the time between, from I'm going to try to see the marketplace as much as possible. There are people who I want to say hello to in the marketplace. But from 12.30 to 1, I'm going to be at the Nitty City booth. And anyone can come meet me there. So, look forward to seeing every you, whoever can come see me there. So, anyone is welcome to send me a private message to get in touch with me. As this show goes on, and I'll have a, try to produce a new episode every week that you can watch pretty much at any time you want to. I'll be adding more to it as time goes on. Thank you everyone for joining me. Until next time, bye!